Hey everyone, this is Mr. Buyer, and here's our recap of the day. So why was Hammurabi's code important? Also, how did agriculture lead to specialization or division of labor and inequality? And the last question, how did agriculture centralize authority or creation of government? Be sure to look at your guiding notes for the questions. If the questions is not on the guiding notes, be sure to answer it on edpuzzle.com. River Civilization, Ancient Egypt, Civilization on the Nile. Here are the state standards. The objectives. Students will be able to compare the Egyptians to Mesopotamians and also explain Egypt's geography. Here are the guiding questions. What were some of the natural resources that enabled the development of Egypt? How does geography affect ancient Egyptian life? How does ancient Egypt compare to Mesopotamia? Looking at this map, I want you to find where Mesopotamia is. Also, I want you to know what country is shaded in green. If you said the area that's in the red circle is Mesopotamia, then you're correct. If you said the green shaded area is Egypt, then you're also correct. Furthermore, I want you to look at this map. This map reveals where the rivers are located in Mesopotamia and Egypt. So as you can see, Mesopotamia has the Tigris and Euphrates, as Egypt has the Nile River. The difference between the two rivers, or three rivers, my apologies, is that the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, they were very unpredictable rivers, unlike the Nile. The Nile was very predictable. Because of that, they were able to irrigate the crops a lot easier. Now I need you to put your thinking cap on by observing this gift to help guide you. Maybe look at the keys that are on the right side of this GIF. On the top right corner, you also can see the timeline. So look at the area of Egypt and Mesopotamia. So if you notice, the key on the right side, they represent nations. So each of these colors represents various city-states or nations. So over in Mesopotamia, you see a lot of city-states. But over in Egypt, it's just a nation. So Egypt is a lot bigger than a lot of these city-states in Mesopotamia. Also, looking at the time, you see that the city-states are changing a lot faster than Egypt. So why is that? Let me go ahead and tell you why Egypt is different from Mesopotamia. It's these things called geographic barriers. So what's a geographic barrier? Let me go ahead and give you examples. So where you see a lot of greenery at the top of Egypt is called the wetlands. This is also the Delta. It's going to be difficult to travel because there's a lot of crocodiles. Also, the Delta is a lot more shallow than the rest of the Nile. So good luck sailing on the Delta. You got the sand dunes of the Sahara Desert. It's going to be hot. The wind's going to shift the sand. You're going to get lost if you're going to try to invade Egypt in the Sahara Desert. That would be a foolish thing to do. So if you're ever going to travel on foot... Don't do it at the Sahara Desert. It's literally a suicide mission to do that. That would be so unwise to do. It's, it's bigger than the United States, okay? You don't understand how large it is. All right, another geographic barrier. So let's say that you're a newbie and you want to go in and invade the Lower Kingdom, which is near the Delta, by the way. Uh, 
Well, it's going to be very difficult if you're going by boat because you got waterfalls or cataracts at the upper Nile. If you go down, your boat's going to crash. So it's going to be very difficult to, to invade. Fun fact, this is called the upper Nile because guess what? Water goes downhill. Gravity pulls it down. So the water is getting dumped up north. Doesn't mean it's going uphill. It's actually going downhill. That's why northern Egypt is called Lower Egypt or the Lower Kingdom. Also, I dare you to climb a mountain with, with a bunch of heavy equipment. I dare you. You think it's going to be easy? I promise you it'll be a lot easier for you to walk on flat land with a lot of stuff, with a lot of supplies than mountains. So that's why it's a geographic barrier. So essentially the kingdom of Egypt has a force field around it. Unlike the city states of Mesopotamia, you got these geographic barriers protecting Egypt. That's why it's so stable. While you can see in Mesopotamia, there's a lot of chaos. They're in the nexus between Africa, Asia, and Europe. It's going to be in the crossword, crossroads of disaster. So that's why if, if, if I got to choose, I'd rather live in Egypt, you know, a citizen of Egypt and a citizen of, let's say, Babylon. So why did the Egyptians settle on the Nile River? You should know the answer. We learned this with Mesopotamia, you know, with the Euphrates and Tigris River. What do you think? It's because of agriculture. Without water, you can't have crops. And you don't have crops, you don't have food. And no food means no people. So that's why you got to... You know, that's why you had Egyptians living by the Nile River. It was a source of food. Also, just like the city-states of Mesopotamia, specialization occurred at the Nile River. So, does that mean specialization equates to equality for everyone? Absolutely not. Because you had a social class set up in Egypt, just like almost anywhere else in the world. Where, you know, you have certain talents, certain roles, certain skills. So, you know, the, the more rare your skill, the more useful your skill was, you're going to be in the higher upper class. So if you were a scribe, for example, being able to read and write, most people back then weren't able to. You're going to be higher up in society. If you lack talent or, or you just have bad luck, you're, you're going to be a poor farmer and possibly turn into a be sure that you answer all the questions in your guiding notes. Also, you got a vocabulary crossword puzzle to do. So if you're lost, just look at the links in the description below or in the Ed puzzle. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.